a day in the life of a BMW enthusiast doesn't get any better than this. Today I'm in Mallorca driving Alpinas, specifically the B3 and the B4. Alpina actually no longer makes a B4, it just makes a more advanced version, the B4 GT, which has more power and it also has a few cosmetic changes. You can think of the B4 GT as the M4 Grand Coupe that BMW never made. Although knowing Alpinas, you know that they are cars that are also geared for low-end torque and comfort. So this isn't an exact M4 equivalent. So the B4 GT has the same S58 engine as the M3 and M4, but Alpina puts its own intake and turbos on it. And even though it's all wheel drive, it's quite tail happy. The B4 GT is not a track car per se. It's a blisteringly quick Autobahn car and the kind of car you take on a fairly twisty road and you drive it quickly. But I'm surprised that it's quite in its element on track too. Oh. The G-Force is going through my body right now, make it difficult to talk. Like any good BMW, or like any BMW for that matter, the car seems to shrink around you when you drive it quickly on track. And it's so eager to rotate around its axis through the corners that it's second to none. There are very few cars that feel this good, especially cars this size. And when it fires itself out of corners, you feel every one of those torques. <laughs> what a day, what a car. And we were told earlier that only a few hundred B4s in the, of this generation have been sold, under 400 if I understood correctly. And the most popular model is the B3 Touring. So they sold around 1500 B3s, of which about a thousand were the Touring and around 500 were the sedan. This car is savage. <laughs> brakes are good too. This car comes with Alpina's upgraded performance brakes as standard now, the GT. And that's a welcome addition on track. The B4 GT weighs almost two tons or around 4,300 pounds. This makes it over 200 pounds heavier than an M440i and nearly 400 pounds heavier than a G80 M3 sedan with rear wheel drive. Now, unlike all those new bigger BMWs with active roll stabilization, the 3 Series and the 4 Series that this is based on don't have that and they do lean a little bit even though they are quite stiffly sprung but I like that it communicates more of what the car is doing which makes this a really really good track weapon to be honest and when you turn on the wipers you know you're having fun I'm going to do a very quick slalom in this then I'm going to bring it to the pits and show you around the car. So the lead car will stop and then he will show us how to go through the slalom and then we're supposed to do the same. So that was a launch control start. This car is ridiculously agile. <laughs> it's fantastic. Anyway, see you in the pits. So after experiencing all those G-forces on track, I have calmed down enough to be able to show you all of this car's cool details, most of which are finished in a special color called Oro Tecnico, which is kind of a copper gold satin type finish, and it's really, really nice, and it's all around the vehicle. So what is the B4 GT? I was trying to tell you on track, but I failed because of the G-forces. The B4 GT is probably the last of its kind from Alpina because the company has sold its name to BMW, which will do whatever it pleases with the Alpina name in the future, hopefully it will do great things. So the B4 GT has more power than the B4 before it, 34 more horsepower and a total of 529 horsepower. And the revised S58 has 730 newton meters of torque or 538 pound feet, which is more than the M3's 650 newton meters or 479 pound feet. And the peak torque arrives between 2500 and 4500 RPM. Maximum power is delivered between 6250 and 
6500 RPM and it never feels like it runs out of puff as you approach the red line which is set at around 7200 RPM. Even with the B4's extra weight, it's still very quick to sprint reaching 62 MPH or 100 km per hour in 3.5 seconds, 124 miles per hour or 200 km per hour in 11.6 seconds and topping out at 189 MPH or 305 kmh. What sets it apart from other BMWs, from BMWs in general, of course, is the Alpina apron with the Alpina logo here, which is also, I think, in Oro Tecnico, or it looks like it. And it gives this car's front end a completely different look. It transforms the car. And if we move to the side, the typical Alpina wheels, which in this case are 20 inch wheels, and they are also finished in Oro Tecnico, but with some diamond cut details here that are silver. They are brilliant. I really love them. Moving down the side, we have the Alpina graphics also in Oro Tecnico with B4 GT logo here. Interestingly, the B4 GT has wider rear tires than the B3 GT. This has 285 section tires on the back and the B3 has 265 section tires. Driving them on track, I didn't really notice a difference. Both cars are surprisingly tail happy and they feel about the same to drive. I asked the engineers here at the event and they said that there's no suspension differences between the cars and that the only real significant difference is the rear tire width. Moving all the way to the back we have the Alpina, the classic Alpina quad exhausts which just like the apron in the front transformed the car. Alpina pointed out to us earlier that the diffuser is a bit bigger than before. I don't think it really does much to aerodynamics. It's just a visual touch, but it's pretty cool. And the Alpina script here, as well as the B4 GT script are also finished in Oro Tecnico. More Oro Tecnico awaits us inside the B4 GT, where all of the stitching is done in this very interesting shade. You also get GT logos here on the sill, as well as on the bottom of the steering wheel. And the steering steering wheel itself is new. It's the new flat bottom steering wheel that BMW introduced with the M4 and M3 LCI. It completely changes the interior, I think. Whenever you have a flat bottom steering wheel in a car, it just looks a bit sportier. And it was pretty interesting to hold on to around the track. It added to the experience. The car also has unique Alpina paddles, which are again finished in Oro Tecnico. And the plaque on the center console that you know from all Alpinas. This particular car is B4 GT number 001, so it's the first one ever. And it's a very special car. It's priced from the magic really happens under the hood with this car where you are greeted by yet more Oro Tecnico on these fantastic braces that are meant to stiffen the car and improve steering feel. And I, I think they work well on the, around the track. The steering is very precise and very accurate, maybe even more so than in regular BMWs. The engine itself is uh, related to the S58 that BMW puts in the M3 and M4, but Alpina puts its own turbos on it and it's geared more for low-end torque. It's a fantastic unit and when you open up the hood and you see these braces, you know you're looking at something special. But while driving the B4 GT out on track is certainly fun and it highlights how good its chassis is. It's on the road that it really, really shines. It gives you the same straight line performance as an M4 but with more comfort. Alpina pitches the B4 GT as something quite different compared to an M car. And the Comfort Plus driving mode really drives the point home that this is more of a grand tour than an out and out sports car. It doesn't light up in the same way that the M4 does up in the rev range, but it gives you more torque, it's more tractable. The suspension is also softer, a little bit softer, not that much softer. And its cornering capability is still second to none. The B4 GT is a very unique proposition because it offers M car levels of performance in a car that is more understated. This is one of Alpina's core values. And out in the real world, on real roads where there are potholes and camber changes and other types of road imperfections, a car like the B4 GT offers more usable performance and it feels less frightening when you drive it quickly not having previously experienced an Alpina, this is my first time driving these cars, although I have driven a lot of BMWs, but I can say that I'm an instant fan of their approach to making cars, their philosophy, their passion, and how they managed to turn a 440i into much more. These paddles, for instance, you might not think they make much of a difference, but they do. They feel so much better in the hand compared to any BMW paddles, any standard BMW paddles. The Italians know this. 
And when you buy a, a sporty Italian car with paddle shifters, they are big, they are made of metal, they're a statement. But in BMWs, in, in German cars, generally speaking, the paddles, they are not a point of interest. But Alpina figured out that they are and made them into works of art. They are just wonderful and also finished in Oro Tecnico. You're also buying into the exclusivity. Sure, at 105,000 euros in Germany, the B4 GT is expensive. That's M car money for a, not an M car. But when you consider how few of these cars are going to be made and sold, I don't think that the price tag is high. If I had that kind of money to throw on a car tomorrow, it would probably be for an Alpina. I wonder what's going to happen to Alpina in the future. BMW bought the rights to the names, essentially buying Alpina out of the car making game, let's say. And there's a danger that future vehicles that bear the Alpina badge won't have the same values as these cars that we are driving today. Even Alpina itself is calling all cars built in the original factory by the original team, calling them classic Alpinas, even though this also includes new cars all the way up to 2025. But Alpina considers them classics because who knows what's gonna come next. I try to extract some information from the company officials, but they are very tight-lipped about the future. Are we going to see the Alpina badge on an EV? Is Alpina going to become like a fancy, very specific trim level, like Maybach is for Mercedes these days. It used to be its own brand, but now it's just a fancy trim level. Granted, it's more than a trim level. When you buy an actual Maybach badged Mercedes these days, it's quite extensively modified and upgraded compared to the series model. Although it's geared towards luxury, while Alpina is geared towards luxury, comfort, and sportiness. So it will be interesting to see what happens in the future. And if this can be embodied, in an electric vehicle because a lot of what makes an Alpina an Alpina is the engine. It's what they pride themselves most on. There's a lot more to talk about regarding this topic but maybe we can do it in the comments. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. I've been Andre for BMW Blog and thank you for watching.